you know, you hear cancer. I, I asked my doctor, what do I tell my family in French? She said, you're going to live a long time. Okay, I actually was diagnosed with a mammogram. And it was kind of surprising because they said you have uh, in, you know, enlarged lymph nodes. So they did a biopsy. And uh, to confirm it, they wanted me to do a PET scan at that point. I was living in New Jersey. And uh, so I went to an oncologist. And uh, that's how I found out and um, said you can get a second opinion. Uh, and MD Anderson was one of them. And um, we happened to be coming down here to do volunteer work for hurricane recovery of Ike. So we made an appointment at MD Anderson. And uh, I was told, watch and wait. And that's what I did. <laughs> I was diagnosed in actually November of 2010. I, I asked my doctor, who happened to be Susan O'Brien at the time, what do I tell my family in French, she said, you're going to live a long time. That's what she said. Yeah. So I didn't worry. I really didn't worry. I didn't watch and worry. <laughs> because, uh, you know, you hear cancer. It's a, um, but that, that was very reassuring. And I really did not tell uh, my siblings. I told my children, but I did not tell my siblings or my friends. Because the first thing they think of, in fact, one time I did tell a cousin uh, or a sister-in-law, and she sent me a get well card. Well, you know, a get well card when you have, see, a chronic illness is, you know, is not the thing to do. So I did not worry. So I didn't tell very many people at all. You know, I, I visited my oncologist in New Jersey probably every three months, and he was following my uh, counts and all, but I really didn't worry. I really didn't. I just knew when it was time, it was time. And I, I did not worry at all. I didn't need any treatment until uh, it began about July of 2014. I started developing a fluid around my lungs. And um, at that point, my oncologist had said, it's, it's time. It's time to have treatment. I started treatment. What happened is um, I was not eligible for ibrutinib. My doctor in New Jersey had said that. But by that time, here again, I feel God has had interview, intervened because we had decided to move to Texas. Our son lived here and he had been encouraging us to come. And um, we found a place in Del Webb, actually, that we thought we should come to. So we had decided we were going to move. So my husband wrote to MD Anderson and said, do you have any, any clinical trials? And they wrote back, yes, but you have to be approved for it. So we came down in November. And actually, during that time, from July to November, I, I needed many, many treatments of thoracentesis because my fluid was building up. And um, <clears throat> when I came down in November, um, I expected to go back and meet the um, mover, but my husband said, you may not come home, which is what happened is we came down Thanksgiving for my granddaughter's uh, dance recital, and we drove down, and I ended up in the hospital for two weeks. And um, I, I was supposed to go through a, a category of tests. I went to the echogram, and the doctor said, you cannot wait, because it was so bad that I could not walk from here to 50, you know, 25 yards away without, you know, uh, heavy breathing. So um, what happened is, because of the fluid, I developed AFib, ended up in the cardiac unit. Dr. Weirda happened to be on the floor. So that's how I became and he said, you know, she's not going to get better until she gets approved. Well, it took two weeks for me to get approved. So I was in the hospital two weeks, started with a calibrutinib. And at first they thought um, it, it affected your uh, heart. So they went through EKG quite often. But then, um, you know, and I, I got out after two weeks, came back, and, um, and several weeks or several days and then a week and then a month. What I must add, in January, a month after I started, I started fainting. 
And, and while I was in the hospital in December, they put two catheters, Denver catheters in, to take care of the fluid. Um, at home, I had a um, nurse practitioner come or to, to withdraw it, and I would be fainting. So finally, uh, we could not get a hold of the doctor, so it, we ended up in MD Anderson, and I had a five um, hemoglobin. So I needed five pints of blood. But uh, here again, they, I was in for a week, and they couldn't find any reason why I had dropped that low. So fortunately, they kept on a calibrutinib. The first catheter went out in a month, and the second one the second month. So ever since then, it's been positive. I haven't gotten scans in about two years now. For a while, they're, they're requiring it. The, treat, the, um, the trial drug required it once a year, but I haven't been getting scans in the last, I think, about two years. And I guess my faith helps me know that I'm comfortable with my state, whatever it is.